I'd like to welcome you to today's session on the user interface slash user experience of SAP's S4 Cloud Public Edition. My name is Ralph Hess. I'm from Navigator Business Solutions, and we're delighted to show you the solution. What I want to first start with, what is S4 Cloud Public Edition? We'll refer to it as S4 Public for, for ease of, of speaking, but it is SAP's latest cloud ERP offering for small to mid-sized enterprises. What it really has is four key areas that it's delivering on. First off, it is a ready to run cloud ERP. It has out of the box, all of the business functionality that you would need for a small to mid-sized enterprise. Things like quote to cash, procure to pay, uh, world, of course, world-class financials. And it's all surrounded by features of the intelligent enterprises. Things like uh, robotic processing, machine learning, artificial intelligence, all of those latest and greatest kind of values that you would expect out of an SAP solution are there for small to mid-sized enterprises to run. It also focuses on latest industry best practices. Obviously, SAP has been in the ERP market space and they invented the concept of cloud ER, of ERP and have now deployed that to the cloud using fit to standard or industry best practices. What that means is you can benefit from SAP's 50 years of ERP experience. They have bundled up and distilled down the best practices in each business area and are now deploying them through this cloud solution. In terms of continuous innovation, SAP is focused on this product and twice a year are releasing significant features as well as intelligent enterprise type capabilities with it. And then lastly, in terms of rapid deployment, we're talking about deployments that are in weeks and months, no longer in lots of months and years. As we start to take a look at the Fiori user interface in the Horizon visual theme, you'll notice that this is a very different SAP product. It's focused on adaptability, the ability to personalize it, allowing you to have all the features that you need to be as productive as possible. So you can rely on spaces and pages, you can get your to-do list published, you can launch your most relevant applications, it will remember where you've been and how you got there. Uh, as you see at the bottom, you're getting that insight to action um, with, with real-time analytics and insight cards. And you get to personalize all this to your specific way of being able to work. So I can talk about this slide all day long, but let's throw it over to Russell DeLapp, my colleague, who will actually walk us through the solution. I am logged in here as my, my user. Um, I'm just in Chrome. It's a completely web-based application. Um, so everything that you're going to see here is just can be ran on any browser or device that runs HTML5, tablet, smartphone, uh, what have you. Um, so we wanted to uh, just kind of go over some of the user experience first. So up here at the top, we have uh, what SAP calls launch pads. And so you'll see me dive into these launch pads, which are basically an area where a key user is going to be performing a task. So you have um, purchasing, for example. Up at the top, we have a series of applications that we're going to be going through. So when we create our purchase request, we're going to go into this app and it's going to pull up the area where I perform those transactions. Within this launch pad, you can move things around pretty easily. It's just drag and drop, so it's very intuitive. It's agile. The user themselves that can set it up how they want. Um, they could be the large tiles or the, the smaller tiles here. And you can also add different uh, KPIs that are relevant to you. So with um, you know, mid-sized organizations, we tend to wear a lot of different hats. And so it doesn't make sense just to put all your KPIs on one kind of landing page or home page, right? So each area, whether you're in purchasing or fixed assets, you can have different insights and KPIs on that launch, launch pad to help um, basically just help guide your work, make, make, the, uh, and make the system kind of work for you and displaying the information that's most relevant. Um, <clears throat> down below here, we have pages, which are um, essentially just another way to dive into those different launch pads. Um, so it's it's configured more, uh, I guess, in a more colorful way um, to to go into those different respective launch pads. And then down here you have a, a section called apps and activities. Um, so this is this is really easy to modify. What what you're going to like about this is it's a quick way to navigate um, to to specific applications without having to go to the launch pad and go to the application. 
So if you wanted to look at your financial statements, you can jump right to your, your P&L, your balance sheet, or if you wanted to go through and, and look at your um, your resources or services, uh, whatever, whatever your quick access buttons you want, um, uh, whether it's stock, non-stock, uh, service capacity, things like that. Um, we also have, uh, the system will track your specific recent activities. So for your <clears throat> for a specific day, you can jump in here and it's gonna take you to different apps that you've been working in throughout the day as well as frequently used. So not just today, but over a period of time, which which apps have I used for this period of time? And uh, it'll present those to me. Uh, like I said, everything's very personalizable. If you saw it on the launch pad, you can personalize the launch pad. Um, you can simply just come up and edit the pages that you want or add the apps that you want to have displayed here. And then as, as we scroll down, we're going to see different ways to uh, look at KPIs, dashboards, and reporting. We'll talk a little bit about that insight, that action concept um, actually throughout the demo. So I'm not going to go into these, but as you can see, these are all out of the box reports that SAP provides to you. Um, it could be driven from the insight being the, the tile format, color coded. You can define the different um, uh, color thresholds to, to your specific requirements, as well as more graphical interfaces here, whether it's a heat map or a uh, trend line with a, a bar chart. So all, all modern type of uh, reports is, you know, in addition to that, not everything's graphical. You can have a list of your, um, in this case, it's it's products, but, um, you know, which, which um, what's my inventory turn essentially is what that's telling me. And then uh, as we go down, uh, we have different to do. So task based, this would be different approvals that you have set up in the system or or specific workflow directed to you, and then you have situations. Uh, so situations are great. It's that, that low code concept where you can configure a situation within your organization. The system's going to say, this these parameters are met, and so I want to notify you of this situation. Um, and so this is this in this case, it could be something like um, I have a service or a work package released, but it hasn't been staffed yet. Notify my project manager. And so you don't have to rely on the user themselves um, looking at a dashboard or a KPI. The system's going to proactively say um, this situation has occurred. Um, go ahead and perform that action. So in this case, um, you know, it gives me this insight, which is great. You can click into it and it's going to tell you exactly where to go to resolve that situation and perform that action. OK. Um, Few more things on just the uh, the overview here. I wanted to point out this enterprise search. Um, so if I type in, let's say, uh, one of my customers, right, UTZ, um, and so this, oh, that's pretty quick. So um, it, it does bring up my business partner here, and then within this business partner, um, you you also can see all the different um, activity that have had have been associated to the business partner. So what what I and what my my customers tend to like about this is um, not only can you navigate directly to the business partner, but also their invoices. But additionally, you, you can look at different apps that are related to this that are that are commonly used when you want to whatever you're looking for and perform that that insight or that action. So if we um, go into this invoice itself. Um, if, if the customer, for example, called and had a question on it, you can dive right into that just by typing their name if they don't have the, the invoice number. So there's a lot of different ways to get at the data here um, and, and look at what was actually sold to them. Um, going back to the process flow. Um, so from the invoice itself, you can see if it's been uh, paid, when it was shipped, um, or if there's a delivery issue associated to this specific order. I, I did want to point out that, again, pretty modern, pretty easy. Um, user interface, there's certain things that are just very intuitive, like this uh, notification here. So my situations will also pop up as a, a notification, just like you'd see on something that's widely adopted and used like, like Facebook, right? Um, and then finally, speaking to the, the personalization, uh, each user can come in and personalize their appearance or look and feel. If you prefer the dark background, um, you, you, can, you can easily change that. Uh, but what you're gonna like here is um, the default values. And so, um, like I mentioned before, when when in the mid market, we wear a lot of hats. And so especially when we're working in that multi entity 
um, environment when I'm performing service orders or um, invoicing for a specific company, I can change my default value to that that company code. And so as I'm performing those activities, the system is going to default the specific company that I have defaulted here. So I don't have to keep typing in the company every time that um, I'm performing that transaction. And, you know, so it's not just always dynamically set to where I'm hired. You can change your default values here. Um, it doesn't have to be in a multi entity There's a lot of different attributes that you can then default and change as you're you're working through the organization. Uh, so specifically, if you're doing a lot of banking or bank work, um, you can default different banks in there to um, to update the transactional documents for you. Uh, oh, uh, one final thing is just the embedded learning. Um, so <clears throat> again, it is a more of a modern learning experience. And so if you if you click the help button, whatever page you're on, you're going to have um, the key elements here. And if you click into that um, that button there, it's going to give you a little bit more insight, but also link you to the expanded help documentation where you'd go and find uh, more information about what you're looking for. And then um, Jen, when you're growing and then you're, you're bringing on new teams, um, there's this academy learning here. And so when I click this little graduate hat, it brings in these um, these uh, click through scenarios. And so you can either jump into the work center or on the page you're on, you can you can just toggle back and forth onto those. But if I show um, there, there's hundreds of these and um, through the implementation, we actually do leverage these. Um, so if we're looking at uh, uh, accounts receivable, you can pull this up and it's going to go through all the critical workflows that SAP has defined and walk you through, uh, you know, the the actual process of posting an incoming check, for example. You can start the tutorial, you can look at the documentation, whatever your learning style is, it's going to um, you know, facilitate that. So as we come through here, you're going to have certain instructions and it's going to ask you to click on this application, right? And so it's an interactive way to to learn and to um, accelerate the onboarding and adoption of the solution. Thanks, Russell. That was great. Hopefully you all had an opportunity to take a look at really those benefits of the user interface, the user experience as we refer to it, because it's no longer just a user interface this ability for you to mold it into something that works for you, that makes the system something that supports you rather than you supporting the system. It allows you to be more productive and able to have the real-time information to make critical business decisions is evident. If you'd like to find out more about S4 Public, please feel free to reach out. My name is Ralph Hess. I over sales, marketing, and pre-sales here at Navigator Business Solutions, and we'd love to have a conversation with you.